My name is Mohammed Abu Asali. I am a civil engineer by background uh, with a PMP certification. Uh, I'm going to deliver this session today, and it's about the uh, combination of infrastructure design and creating an interactive uh, experience like a game. The workflow that I've uh, created or worked on involves three different tools from Autodesk. So the first one is InfraWorks 360. How many of you, please, are using InfraWorks 360? If you can raise your hands, how many are using InfraWorks 360? No one? <laughs> OK. InfraWorks 360, very briefly, is a very powerful BIM tool for the conceptual design of infrastructure projects. Same like as we have Civil 3D for the detailed design. How many of you know Civil 3D? A couple, a few, good. We have a new tool from Autodesk called InfraWorks 360 that is really very powerful, and I recommend that you check it online on our website. Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover it all today. I'm just going to talk about how we create a 3D model inside of InfraWorks for a city or a neighborhood. Then we move that model into 3ds Max, the well-known uh, visualization and uh, media entertainment engine. And from 3ds Max into Stingray, the tool that will allow us to get into the seat of a driver and drive throughout the city from our BIM 3D model. So why am I presenting to you today about this workflow? When I first joined Autodesk two years ago, I was actually uh, impressed by this video. It was created by Autodesk. This is from Doha, the capital of Qatar. And they actually scanned and created the whole BIM model of the West Bay area with the Corniche and simulated the traffic in there. Autodesk went a step further by having what we call the uh, BIMulator. So what you're seeing here is actually driving through the streets of Doha that was created from BIM models, like civil, Revit buildings, etc., etc. And that workflow was created using Civil 3D, 3ds Max, and at that point in time, two years or three years back, a gaming engine called UDK. Now, the latest update from Autodesk is that we do have now a gaming tool that really replaces this UDK. And this is where we talk about Stingray. The other thing which actually excited me to do this work and create this workflow is that wherever you go online, you will find too many statistics and studies about the importance of visualization in the AEC industry. This is just one from a uh, well-known magazine called CG uh, Architect. They have many interesting statistics, like this one, for example, 84% of people or designers plan to invest in visualization technology in the next two years. And 53 of them believe that those without BIM experience and visualization experience will be left behind. So more and more, we're seeing the importance of visualization in the AEC industry. Definitely, that applies to many different disciplines. We have the AEC, the architecture. We have the interior design. We have the manufacturing, and we've seen a couple of samples in the uh, main stage session today, as well as infrastructure. Our customers today do not accept to look into 2D plans or sheets just from AutoCAD. They expect something like that to the uh, right bottom corner of the screen. Ingray is a new tool gaming engine from Autodesk. And this tool is actually able to create uh, a, 3D, uh, a 3D game and do some live rendering uh, for the projects that we work on. This is just a small video about the capabilities of Stingray. There is a lot of interaction and link between 3ds Max and Stingray. Don't worry about the presentation. I will share it with you. I will share also the videos, a handout, and many others uh, after, after today. So there is one box folder which I will share the link with you by the end of the session. What you're seeing here is the direct link between 3ds Max and Stingray. Whatever you change in 3ds Max gets updated in Stingray. And this is where we, we do the live rendering, meaning we get into the model, 
interactively and whenever we look, whenever we go into everything updates or renders on the fly. Whereas in 3ds Max, for those of you who use 3ds Max, we create rendered images or videos that are static. So for certain scene, certain perspective. And this is the major difference between the two. Now, do you think we can transform any infrastructure project into an interactive game experience in less than 30 minutes? Yes, it is possible now. And as I mentioned earlier, it's InfraWorks, 3ds Max, and Stingray. Very quickly, before I go into the live demo and show you how is that being done, just a quick overview. This is InfraWorks. For those of you who have never uh, used it before, it's very user-friendly. So you can see here, for instance, very few icons and drop out uh, menus as well, or fly outs. And it's very visually compelling. So you see th things in 3D. We create the model in InfraWorks. We export it into, for example, FBX. Sorry about the cropping there. And into 3ds Max, we do some of the uh, corrections, if I may say. And finally, into Stingray, where we tell Stingray, where we tell the tool that this terrain has actual you know, shape. It's a structure that if we drive on top of it, it has hills, it has uh, collision factors. From there onwards, we export it either to Android, iOS, Windows, uh, PlayStation, or Xbox. So Stingray is the tool used to export our model into a, a livable game. The end result is something like this. So you have a BIM model or a 3D model of the city of Istanbul, for example, from InfraWorks to 3ds Max to Stingray, and you get that high fidelity or that uh, visualization in Stingray. And the car that you see there is basically being driven by myself using the simple controllers. And I'm driving throughout the city to see, for example, if we're having uh, a bridge over there, how would it look like? What is the scene like? What is the, uh, for example, the slope, if it's OK or not OK? So let me jump directly into the live demo. And I hope I'll have enough time to cover it all because it's a lengthy procedure. Just to show you an example, this is just one simple model created in InfraWorks, right? And I'm going to share this with you after the session through Box. Uh, in InfraWorks, for those of you who have never seen it, it's very visually compelling. So you can have everything from trees, vegetation, people, street lighting, uh, buildings uh, that can be from Revit, from SketchUp, and even vehicles. What I've done, in the second step, just export the model into, uh, I've selected a polygon, and into an FBX file format. I'm going to just skip this step to save on time. But everything that I'm not doing here is going to be shared with you on this handout. So I've created this handout, 24 pages. It goes step by step on how to use InfraWorks to create a model and how to export the model and open it in 3ds Max. So here, very easily, importing the FBX file from InfraWorks. Just OK, and now it will open. So create the 3D model in three InfraWorks, export it into FBX, import it or open the, the model inside of uh, 3ds Max. And here, we can do some of the required corrections before we move into Stingray. The first thing to do is select all and group them. So we have now one group. Once we're done, we use the Select and Transform tool, right click. These are just best practices for the model to work perfectly inside of Stingray. So I had to figure those out on my own. So I'm just going to put 0, 0, 0 to center the model. I don't have to have any coordinates in there. So the model is now centered. Select them again, ungroup the components, and now it is centered at 0, 0, 0. The other thing that we have to do is basically correct some of the texture problems that we might have from InfraWorks. So let me just zoom in a little bit and click to the side. As you can see, some of the features, like the trees, for example, they've lost the texture on the leaves, like the material or the color. This can be fixed very easily. But before I do that, I'll fix the names of those textures. And for this reason, we have created a script inside of 3ds Max, which I will also share with you after the session. 
convert bitmap NAPES, we get the textures, and then convert them. The issue from exporting, of exporting uh, or creating the model from InfraWorks to 3 ds Max, there is certain minor problems, which I've highlighted to the to the development team. They will they will fix it. But for now, we have to use the script to solve the problems we are having. So we've converted the names, and it will fix the name of each and every texture, the materials. So instead of having, for example, d.tiff.jpg, which will confuse Stingray, once we've fixed them, as you can see, all of them are now fixed. We're done with the fixing. Now let's fix some of the materials in here. For those who know 3ds Max, we have something called the Material Editor. By just a click of a button, if I click the M uh, button on the keyboard, the Material Editor opens up. And here we, are, we can assign different material to objects or even change their characteristics. I'm just going to pick the dropper, click on the palm trees, for instance. They will give me all of their uh, details. What I care about is, let me click it again. OK. It's here. It's self-illuminated. I'm going to tick this off, and things go into their original condition. Now, there are other issues in the model, but I will not fix them all here just to save you time because we're limited on time. Sometimes you might have like uh, objects which have different colors. So in this case, you have to create a new material, drag and drop, or apply it to that object. What you're seeing, sorry for that. What you're seeing here is just a small portion of the model I showed you earlier. So I'm done. Let's suppose that we're done with the fixing. So this is. So we've exported, if I go into the handout, we've exported the model, opened it in 3ds Max. As you've seen, we have grouped the, the elements, changed the uh, coordinate system into 0, 0, 0. We have ungrouped it. We have run the script to fix the uh, bit, bitmap names, as we've done. We've changed the uh, materials of some of the objects, like trees, for instance. And now we go into Stingray. So the second step would be is by firing up Stingray. So now we're done with from InfraWorks. I don't need the InfraWorks anymore. I'm going to just exit the application and go to Stingray. Now, there are many different releases of Stingray. So every, I think, a month or two, there is a new release. And it's really recommended for you who want to try this handout and try this workflow to download the latest release. The one that I used to generate this workflow is the 1.4.728. But anything after that is OK. Now, as you can see, it's very simple inside of Stingray, this tool that allows you to create a game. You have basic templates, like initial files. If you want to create a driving experience for your model, you use the vehicle. If you have, you, want, you have a buildings or a set of buildings that you want to walk to or navigate, you can use this one, the character. And you can even integrate that with virtual reality. So if you have the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, you can do that as well. For my part, I'm going to create a vehicle template. So double click on it. I'll ask the software to create a new project. Let's call it Infra Game. You can save it wherever you like. I'm just going to save it on the desktop. And you can put any description in there and create. What now Stingray will do, will create all of the files necessary to allow you to create a game from your uh, 3D model. So you will get, let me close this again. OK. This is the basic uh, user interface of Stingray. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it's really easy. You have the asset browser here. It's like the Windows Explorer shows you where are the folders and files for your uh, model or your game. Here you have kind of the expanded view of those files and folders. To this side, you have the asset viewer. And here you have some of the uh, options to change the lighting, the shading effects, and then uh, export them. Let's go very quickly into the level, what we call the level. Uh, content, levels. 
And here, once I click on the vehicle template, you will see that it shows me here there are cars. Let me just double click on it. It will open it here. Uh, okay. And by the way, you have to have a powerful machine to run these tools on. You have to have a very powerful graphics card. So just bear with me if something goes wrong. Okay. So let me just drag this to the bottom. As you can see, there are blocks, there are cones, there is this reflective probe and a light and cars. This is just setting the scene for you to bring the 3D model of a city or a neighborhood into Stingray. For our uh, game purposes or for our experience, we don't have to have all of these items in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete them all. And the way to do it is actually clicking on one, then pressing on the control key. For some reason, it's not taking all, okay. Okay, so you, you click the first one, then you hit the shift key, and then you click at the very end, then delete. I just wanna keep, uh, actually, see, everything updated there instantaneously. So I just also wanna remove the wall. I just wanna keep the reflection probe and a certain light object in there. You can change the light features, how many probes, etc., like you do in, inside of 3ds Max. Now, we've created the scene to bring in the 3D model. It's very important to save everything from time to time. So we've saved that. What I'm gonna do now is show you that inside of uh, 3ds Max, we have a direct link to Stingray. So once you install, there's a certain executable or MSI files, once you install it, you will have this new tab inside of uh, 3ds Max that will allow you to send everything that was corrected or created inside 3ds Max to Stingray. So let me just control all to confirm. Stingray, and I want to ask the software to send it all to Stingray. So now it will tell me where do you wanna copy or create those files from 3ds Max. I will tell the uh, system content and into the levels folder where I have created the, uh, the vehicle template. Let's call it infra game two. So now the link is being done between 3ds Max and Stingray. Ev everything is being pushed from 3ds Max to Stingray and Stingray on its own will pop up or will show me the FBX import window to tick what objects or what features I want to bring from 3ds Max to Stingray. What I really want to keep in there, just not to confuse myself, and it's also mentioned in the handout. So we've done all that, sending, okay. Let me just double check that that's done. Okay, already connected. Content, okay. So these are the ones that we need to basically uh, open inside of Stingray. The materials, the updated materials, texture, update the texture, and create textures folder. You can tick some others, but for this purpose, it's enough. So no shared materials, and no shared textures. These are the ones. I hit import. And you will see here at the uh, update bar, Stingray will tell me what is the progress of importing the 3ds Max model into uh, Stingray. It will take a little bit of time. So depending on your machine power, what is the processor, what is the graphics card, and, and on the complexity of your InfraWorks model, which you corrected inside of uh, 3ds Max. And you will, start it, you will start to see that there are some files being updated there. So see, we have the files, the objects, the textures are being populated. They are created inside of 3ds Max, inside of Stingray, sorry. So it's done, so the import is completed. If you have any error, it will give you here a signal, a warning sign, and it will tell you there's a certain texture or a certain object that is, was not imported or opened correctly. What I care about is the infra game itself. So if I click on this, 
I can see that the model which we had in 3DS Max was imported correctly into Stingray. Sort of. So if I drag this into our scene, and this is actually sometimes a tedious process because it's manual, and we want to have the probe and the lighting just at the center, almost at the center of the 3D model. So this is done manually. Okay, so just click on it, drag and drop. And it's very sensitive, so I'll just try my best luck here. Okay, now there are some uh, ways to check. Well, it's way of center, then I will use the gizmos to make sure it's almost there. And this is very important because I'll tell you in a second. And this is the just the axes. Okay. Okay. So what I'm just trying to do is, it's a, a little bit slow because uh, it's better to use it on a hard, uh, on a, not on a laptop but on a desktop machine. So just bear with me a second. Okay. So even sometimes zooming in, if it's a heavy model, it will take a little bit of time. As you can see here, I managed to put the uh, the grid somehow on top of the model. I just want to move it a little bit to this side for one simple reason. See this point, the intersection point, the black point? This is where Stingray will drop my car into the model to drive through it. So it's very important to center this point, this one, the intersection between the black lines, somewhere on a road within your model. Once we're done from this, <coughs> we're supposed to tell Stingray that this is actually a solid model, meaning if you have a car on an object, it will crash and will not pass through it. In order to do so, I will hit the Control A, so everything is selected in green, and then from there onwards, I will have to do a right click, open, sel uh, open selected in the unit editor, hit that, And also, depending on the number of objects within the model, it will update. So give, give it a few seconds, and it will be OK. The other thing we can do, actually, but we don't have time for it now, is fix some of the textures inside of Stingray. So as you can see, everything is in there. Also do the same thing, Control A to select all. Here we have many uh, mesh creating uh, features, but I'm not going into it. I just want to go into the Create button, Physics Actors, and give it a few seconds to create those meshes. So it will create all of the mesh of the model uh, to be able to drive through it. Once it's there, it's created, I just have to go to the file, save all. It will save it within a few seconds. See, 117 Physics Actors, OK, saved. Hit the Close and we're done. So the game is now ready to be exported. One last thing to be done later, if we have the time, we'll do it, but let's just uh, zoom into this tree, for example. I don't know if you can see it here. We've got the terrain, and this terrain can be brought from InfraWorks, or if you have images, JPEGs, or satellite images from Google or whatever, that's up to you. But look at this tree, for instance. There are like black plates, 
for the leaves. This can be saved or can be actually corrected also inside of Stingray. The way to do it is you have to look, and ha I have also explained how to do this step by step in the handout, but just to let you know, you just have to look for the proper material. So in this case, this is for instance, is the grass. I wanna look for the red uh, leaves. So I'm just letting it update. This one. And this is the cool thing about Stingray. It gives you a very visual feedback about everything that is in the model. So I have a problem. It's showing the leaf itself and some black uh, texture around it. What I wanna do I go to the property editor of that material, and here we do have many options. This is more detailed into those who work with the media entertainment, but for every image, like for this table, how do you tell the computer that this is the edge, and whatever is beneath it, this surface is transparent? There is something what we call as uh, alpha map, or color alpha map. So I have to take this on, and as you, as you can see, directly updates. So there are other things to be done, and I've explained that also in the uh, handout, because even with this material, there is still like a small lining around it. So you have to go to the Make Unique button, open the shader graph. This is more detailed, I know, but I'm just giving you an idea how you can fix all of the other things. And here we move into the uh, visual programming. Stingray supports visual programming that are nodes. So from this one, you have to select the latest node Pick here, transparent fade, and then for the uh, okay, and here it's basically double sided, and then it will update. So it's better, better looking, and you can see there are like no lines around it. Anyway, so we're done with that. You can fix all of the other materials. See. The tree has directly updated. We don't have those black lines around it. You can fix all of the other uh, textures like that. So now save all, save everything, save selected. And we go into the most important part is the deployment capability of Stingray. So if I hit this deployer tab, you will be able to see that I can push the model or create a game experience for Windows, for uh, Android, for iPhone or iPads, for a PlayStation or even for an Xbox. So since we're running it on a laptop, all what you have to do is just uh, select the destination. I will click here, create a new folder. And then I want it to be released, means the final release, and just hit the button, oh, okay. Package project for Windows. And then the software will compile this 3D model all together and push it into a user-friendly file, exe file that we know about, the executable file. It will take a couple, maybe a couple of minutes, depending on the uh, complexity of the model. Again, if I go back to the handout, all of that about how to drag the, the model, how to fix the orientation using the gizmos is already there. So open it in the shader graph, selecting and creating the physics actor, saving all, and then saving all of that, and then finally creating the deployment or the exe file. So all of these steps are there, and then we get into the uh, fun part. So. So if I haven't missed any step, now if I go into the, because this one is completed, so finished compiling, which is good. If I go into the AUX 2016 Istanbul, you will find a folder, another folder, and then you have the game.exe. If I double click on it, there is, by the way, sounds, and there is feeling of the terrain. You will be wondering why it's a taxi, because this is the one coming with the template, but you can change the vehicles, add anything you like. So as you can see, the car was dropped, and then I can drive it into my model. Imagine that this is, for instance, a Revit uh, bridge overlooking the city, or you have, 
and then you can drive throughout the model the way you like. So everything that you have in terms of a BIM model, from Revit, from Civil 3D, from SketchUp, you bring into InfraWorks, this is the great uh, platform, you export that into 3D X Max, into Stingray. Imagine, now you're seeing some problems with the palm trees, as you can see, the trunk, because we did not fix that. So let me just open the one that I have uh, fixed earlier and show you. So this is the full model from InfraWorks sent into 3D, uh, 3ds Max and Stingray. So as you can see here, definitely you can change the uh, controls and you can check, for example, at a certain speed if this is okay, not okay. So it's really up to you, I'm not a very good driver apparently, to manipulate the, the model that you have. So for example, if you have a new bridge to be constructed and you have a certain vehicle, by the way, everything you see there is to scale. So if you have a certain vehicle that is of a certain height and you want to check if it passes through that bridge, if it passes, it's okay. If not, it will get stuck. So it's this interactive feedback between the infrastructure model and the gaming experience that our designers can now leverage and use to create visualization, uh, new visualization experience. And trust me, once you do it a couple of times, you will be able to finish this in 30 minutes. So going back into the, uh, the handout, okay. Another thing that you will get is this video. So I have recorded the whole process from InfraWorks to 3ds Max and into Stingray and how to fix each and every bit of the model to finally come into the, uh, the model itself. So this is there, will be shared with you later. Um, let me skip this. And this is what I will share with you on the box folder uh, later. So you will find there is the handout. This is a revision seven, which I showed you the PDF file. You will have the, have the step by step video. You will have the Stingray game engine exported from uh, Stingray. You will have the InfraWorks XBX file from InfraWorks itself. And read first, it will just tell you what are the steps to, to go through. And finally, and last but not least, the script that we need, the, the programming language that we have to run in order to fix the problems inside of Stingray, inside of 3ds Max before moving into Stingray. And definitely I will share with you some links about the uh, Stingray product website, uh, 3ds Max and InfraWorks. And I highly recommend that you guys check InfraWorks 360. It's a very powerful 3D visualization and creation tool. So this is it from my side. I think I did not violate the 35 minute uh, time limit. This is my email address. And feel free to send me any email regarding to the three products. And it's now time for questions, if you have any questions. So please feel free to ask. Okay, let me just check if I still have them. I removed the box link. Uh, th there is actually a link where we can uh, share the, the data with you. So expect like two to three days and you will have access to those material uh, from us. So any questions? I know it's a weird workflow. Who would imagine? Yes, please. Okay, there are many, many differences between uh, Stingray and Unity. Uh, it's a long discussion. The cool thing about Stingray itself is that it integrates seamlessly with 3ds Max. You have this direct link with the materials, with the textures and everything. So you won't have any issues of any sort. And to be honest with you, if we talk uh, investment wise, it's, uh, it's nothing compared to Unity. So the subscription for Stingray with all of its added benefits is a fraction of what you would pay or you would invest in, in Unity, for example. Uh, I have 
four to five slides, but so I just give you an idea. With Stingray, on average, we're talking about two thirty dollars per year annual subscription. Just to give you an idea. And with other tools in the market, I'm not gonna name them, but it's usually a percentage of the profit. So if you work for a company that is using Unity or other tools, they might ask you if you are creating a project commercially, that they will share some of the profit of that project uh, with you. They will take money depending on how much profitable the project is. Whereas with Autodesk, this is the fixed, almost fixed, $230 per year, that's it. And you get the full software uh, with the updates and everything. Now, there are other slides, but they are more technical. Is that how, uh, to be honest, Stingray is changing the industry. So there is a certain workflow for media and entertainment designers that they go through. Stingray is providing new capabilities that is really disrupting the workflow, uh, reducing the time and the effort to create those visualizations or live renderings. This is one. The other thing is Stingray integrates perfectly with 3ds Max, Maya, and the other Autodesk tools like Autodesk uh, Humanic, Beast, uh, Autodesk Navigation, and other ones. So this is the benefit or the added benefit on Unity. And definitely being able to push whatever you create to the different platforms, whether Android, iOS, Windows, with a single click of a button. So there are ma many issues or many benefits for Stingray, along with the visual coding. So I've showed you just the shader graph where you have those nodes and the links. So if you're not a hard programmer, because in Stingray you can program using Lua scripting, there's a certain programming language, or you can use the visual coding with the nodes and the uh, wires or connections. So this is just briefly to tell you what is the difference and the added benefits of Stingray. A very good question, by the way. Any other questions? If you want to ask in Turkish, please, no problem. We have translators, so feel free to ask. How many of you think that they can replicate what I have done? Not in half an hour, but let's say in one hour, one hour and a half. More, 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 more. Come on, come on. You can do it. OK, a couple. So you'll have the video, the handout, and everything. Trust me, it's an easy process. You do it twice or thrice, and then you'll be expert at it. Yes, please. Uh, such uh, project. I mean, uh, most of the game engines can't uh, work on the large-scale model, but uh, they have something like doing levels. For example, when your car comes to somewhere, it loads another level. For that, uh, for the, uh, you showed the yes. earlier um, model, someone's driving inside. Yes. Were there levels inside? You can create that. Huh. But that's actually too advanced. Huh. So that's why I did not go into it here. Okay. It requires okay. some scripting or some you know, visual coding to create huh. that. But it's possible, definitely possible inside of. Uh, and the link on the product website will show you how you can have sample projects on that. So either by driving a car or as a character, as you said. So going into a s one point will take you into some other level. Uh, these are available online. I recommend that you go to YouTube channels and check the lengthy videos. We have like one hour, two hours on the step-by-step -step procedure. OK, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much.